Blakemore Technology presenter here at XR Today and this week in our big news update we will be dissecting the top news stories over the past couple of weeks with an exclusive interview with a Chief Scientific Officer from Farcana. In this episode we will be focusing on stories like Lenovo Think Reality System is their Drive Enterprise Metaverse, Japanese EMT's Trial Vuzix M400 Smart Glasses, Realware is to become platform solution firm, and Video unveils open metaverse tools at SIGGRAPH 2022. So let's get straight into it. A story which has been hot in the news right now is about Lenovo's Think Reality system and how it will fuel the growth and expansion of the solutions for developing the metaverse. Lenovo remains a leading player in building enterprise level metaverse solutions capable of driving digital transformations, connecting remote workers and streamlining business operations for greater continuity as well as meeting sustainability targets. XR Today senior editor Damon Kewerton has been speaking to Dr. Dmitry Mihailov, Chief Scientific Officer at Farcana in a special interview discussing the biggest news over the last couple of weeks in the XR landscape, including our top story about the Think Reality system within Lenovo. Let's take a look. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Damon Kiriton, Senior Journalist for XR Today. As always, we're bringing you the latest and greatest from the VR, AR and XR industries. So today we have on a very special guest, Dr. Dmitry Mihailov. He is a visiting associate professor at the National University of Singapore. He's also a contract expert for the United Nations, as well as a chief scientific, uh, scientific officer at Farcana, which is a Dubai-based blockchain and crypto play to earn platform. So welcome today, Mihailov. It's a pleasure to speak to you. Pleasure to speak to you too. Uh, so our first article for today is Lenovo Think Reality to Drive Enterprise Metaverse. And so what this talks about is how Lenovo's Think Reality A3 platform and uh, other kinds of like solutions the company is making is actually developing metaverse technologies and infrastructure and different kinds of solutions. Now, my question to you is, like for you, what are some of the key emerging technologies that we need to use to develop the enterprise metaverse specifically? Well, of course, augmented reality that doesn't work so well. Of course, virtual reality for training all that need yet to be mastered because, well, all industries are so different and scenarios are very different and there is no like universal solution that fits all these industries. And the data flows from the different like factories or medical facilities is very different. So uh, there will be more and more niche solutions because you need huge amount of big data to train your AI to make your image recognition better, to make your solution really fit the industry demand because so far experts that are afraid of losing job are really reluctant to adopt new technologies, unfortunately. And you have to really excite them with the level of accuracy and uh, the fact that their job will become easier. And um, also answering your question, there is, an, there is one more trend that is very important. There are a lot of... Um, there is, there, is, there are a lot of problems with attracting talents and uh, training these talents to most of the industries. And they, here in this case, in this particular case, say augmented reality with uh, distant support of specialists can really help. We definitely see it, say, for example, in uh, medical area, in uh, agro area as well, where it's very hard to grow a new specialist. So augmented reality is uh, widely used to have this assistance, distant assistance to specialists in the field or say in hospitals. Brilliant, uh, thanks for sharing those insights for us. Um, I wanted to ask you about the next article, which kind of dovetails into what you've just recently discussed. Uh, we talk about Japanese EMTs who are trialing Vuzix M400 smart glasses when they are dispatched to certain scenes, you know, this provides a lot of in, you know, information and insights to ambulance workers using augmented reality smart glasses. Um, for you, I wanted to ask you why or how important is it to have well-developed real-time spatial computing solutions for first responders? Uh, what are some problems they could, that could occur if they fail to do this when trialing these new solutions? Well, um, of course, these solutions are very important. Again, mostly, as I mentioned, because of the talent shortage 
and uh, also because you have to have like a lot of different skills say walking an ambulance because cases are very different and in some cases not always but in some cases uh, those who walk in the ambulance can rely on augmented reality say to help there and have some advice and uh, transform the send the data to uh, specialists, niche specialists who can really do consultancy in the particular case. And time is very important here, but uh, it's also important to understand that uh, there is a big problem with data channels and a huge amount of data that has to be transferred. Is, this is not just available in most of the cities. Of course, Japan is a good example and uh, there is no problem with uh, data channels and uh, sending all this big data, but adoption it in different countries where with lower, lower network abilities will be much worse. Right, right. Yeah, and I guess it also depends on how much 5G is available to the country. So that way they can um, True. You know, disperse that information across the big city as well as to the rural populations. And that's still something that they're really trying to solve. Um, to get that um, network penetration across the country and not just in the larger cities. So that brings right. us to our third article that we're talking about a lot of companies that are rebranding to become metaverse solution providers. So for example, Realware is, be is going to become a platform solution firm and they're trying to focus on their cloud and assistance software as a service programs and as well as to help better solutions for the metaverse. Now for you, um, what can you tell us about these companies that are rebranding as metaverse firms? Does this help to kind of communicate the best solution for the industry? Or is this just something that everyone's kind of jumping on a bandwagon? Now, what can you tell us about that? Of course, it's a big hype. I mean, using metaverse is as important as using carbon credits or ESG uh, because it's it's something that people speak about and of course nobody wants to be to be out of this uh, trend but most solutions that uh, companies provide are immature to be massively adopted it's a big problem and to improve the quality of the products they are they have to be very niche very focused on a particular problem and spend some time and efforts and money to do it, or they just will be taking part in this hype and just, just forget about it. And unfortunately, we see a lot of a lot of things like this happening on the market. Right, and we saw how you know many companies, many people reacted to companies like Meta Platforms, which used to be Facebook. They expanded yeah. into the metaverse. And then their solution is now, you know, it's struggling a, a bit, but we'll see what they develop for 2023, as well as NVIDIA, Microsoft, a lot of them are now focusing on the metaverse in order to develop the infrastructure for that. Now, um, I guess for your company as well, like for Farkava, um, <clears throat> Farkana, I'd like to know, like, what is it doing to develop metaverse um, solutions? Um, and why is it branded as such? Well, um, actually, it's, I think it's a very good strategic idea that the CEO of Arcana is, um, is telling about. Uh, he wants to focus on the game, like AAA game shooter, basically. That's uh, everything going on Mars. It's a hot topic. Uh, multiple players are going to join the game. And the winner of this uh, competition will get Bitcoin. So basically, it's also about hype with cryptocurrencies and triple A games, and of course the Mars topic. But uh, this is just a start because to provide a new product, you have to communicate with your clients. You have to understand what they want. You have to speak with them, and uh, this is why from the triple A game, Farcana will develop uh, step by step into metaverse. And uh, you have to remember that Farcan is registered in uh, Dubai and uh, Emirates are very supportive on any metaverse uh, projects. And uh, we already are in communication with a lot of government bodies who want to see 
how they can be represented in the new Farcana metaverse. They're very open to all these trends. But uh, as our management thinks, and as it's written in our strategy, the winner in this competition will be the company who will attract more users. And doing it through gaming is a is a very smart move, as I as I think. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of play to earn um, organizations. There's like Izumi World. Uh, there's a lot that have been created from Niantic, uh, such as you know Pokemon Go, and then there's um, we have Spheroid Universe, which we spoke into not too long ago, where they're also developing kind of like a metaverse ecosystem for enterprises. So we see this trend really taking steam and you know driving itself into the future. Our last um, article that we'd like to introduce is the one on NVIDIA, who has unveiled its open metaverse tool for the SIGGRAPH 2022. And basically what they have done is created a lot of new tools, a lot of new solutions for their Omniverse platform, which includes the Avatar Cloud Engine, Universal Scenes Description, and a, a lot of different extensions, as well as you know artificial intelligence tools. Now, for you, um, we talk about open source. Now, what does it mean to have an open source metaverse solution? Uh, what do you think are your thoughts on efforts to develop global standards in building the metaverse? Well, you know, metaverse started as a Web 3.0 type of project, right? And uh, what we see now uh, in gaming, say, the community is... Um, is not in favor of big corporations and they prefer open source and this blockchain type of approach and uh, this is one side of of the story the other side is that of course big leaders like industrial companies who want to ad to adopt metaverse uh, type of uh, technologies they of course rely more on companies like google nvidia microsoft so we have two big trends here. And I think at some level they will merge and they will merge in a way that blockchain community wants it to merge. I mean, it's, it has to be open. Standards will be there, but not the way we are used to. I think there will be some kind of voting or community will be more involved so that we, we see how, for example, Bitcoin is evolving. You can see already like Stacks to Zero project that is basically a smart contract uh, layer over the Bitcoin. It takes time to introduce these smart contracts on Bitcoin, but the whole community is involved. And the standard, the new standard is evolved with the whole community. And I think there will, these two trends will merge at some time. Right. And it's that collaborative effort that helps to build these yeah. metaverse platforms uh, that really, really makes it stand out compared to like centralized platforms maybe for example meta meta's horizon worlds and you know other types um that you know there's not as much control over the communities say in what goes in what goes out and how it's organized um so yeah any other thing that you'd like to add about this before we sign off for today yeah i just uh, one more thing is that maybe commenting uh, this NVIDIA initiative and uh, bigger corporations initiative, they also go to metaverses to get data from users to improve their products. And uh, users are not willing to share that to big companies. They, mo uh, they want to put it on blockchain and to get money for, from corporations for using this data. So it's, a, it's also a big trend that we see, say, in Farcana. So now we try to introduce new logic. Uh, basically, as a scientist, I, I like the idea. It's called decentralized science, where you can get access to the data openly. Uh, but you, if you benefit from this data, you have to share some money or some income that you, you that you get from using it and from developing new products. So it's also a big trend, and I think big, big corporations will be going for this big data to metaverses populated with a uh, big number of players or, or users. So it's, it's also the trend that we have to consider. Absolutely. 
Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, we do really appreciate your time and your knowledge on this. Uh, once again, we have been speaking to Dr. Dmitry Mihailov. He is the Chief Scientific Officer at Farcana, which is, again is a Dubai-based blockchain and crypto play-to-earn platform. He's also the Visiting Associate Professor at the National University of Singapore and a contract expert at the United Nations. So if you in the audience would like to continue following us, please do so at the XR News hashtag on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Once again, my name is Mon Curitan, Senior Journalist for XR Today. And we do appreciate your time and continue to follow us for the next round. Bye now. That was a great interview highlighting some insightful key points. Thank you, Dimitri, for joining us. That's all from me. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notification alerts so you don't miss any more of our news analysis. To keep up to date with all the latest news from the XR world, sign up to our weekly newsletter by clicking on the link below this video. Thanks for watching.